When learning subnetting, it helps to have tools that not only show you the correct answers, but shows you how to find the correct answers for those cases where you get the question wrong. In this video, I'll point you to a few tools that do just that. First off, you want to practice, and when you miss something, you want to work on the process till you perfect it so you can do it on your own, right? So let me tell you about three sources for tools that help you do that if you want to use the kind of processes I talk about here in this channel and in my books. The book itself, unsurprisingly, uses those processes. I've got some subnetting products that I've made that use those same processes. And then I've got some free resources, including some videos here at this YouTube channel that follow those same processes, all right, and gives you help so you can learn and internalize and then forget about all the details other than how to get the answer, all right? You can also use a subnetting calculator. You can do an internet search and find those. However, they may not describe to you how to get the answers, or if they do, they may use other processes. So feel free to use them. A lot of people do. But what I'm going to show you here is a way to get lots and lots of practice with the same process behind it so you can get good at one process, which is a better way to learn how to subnet. I've been writing the official CCNA cert guide since 1998, yes, a while ago. And the new edition that came out in 2024 has this cover over here. It's a second edition. It's got this green swoosh on the left that points that out. In that edition, part four in volume one is the subnetting part. And there are five chapters there. And those are the chapter numbers I'll refer to here. All right, so what's there? Well, chapters 12, 13, 14, and 15 have actual processes that you could practice. So in the books, there are four matching appendices with practice problems. Those are PDFs that are available on the, quote, companion website for the book. That is a web page that you would have access to if you own the books. The publisher also takes the content from three of those and creates interactive exercises available on that same website. So let me give you a brief demo of how to find those tools. So let me walk you through the companion website a bit. First off, you look in the introduction to the book and it tells you how to register your book and you go through that process. And I'm not gonna repeat that here. Once it's registered, when you're logged in to the ciscopress.com website, you're gonna have a tab available that says registered products. So you register the book, it shows up under registered product, all right, same term there. And then when you look down, you see a list of books that you've registered in the past. And here's an entry for the CCNA Official Cert Guide, Volume 1. It doesn't say Edition 2, but if you look at the cover, it's got that green swoosh on it. That's the reminder that it's the Edition 2 book. And if you look at the highlighted portion there, it says Access Bonus Content. It does not say <laughs> Access Companion Website. I personally wish it did, but it doesn't. So that's the thing you click to get to the companion website, which is in part why I put this in the video. <laughs> so if you do that, it opens up the companion website itself. So you get all sorts of clickables on the left. You get some text. I'm just going to scroll down a bit to give you a quick tour. You get information about how to access the practice tests. I'm going to scroll past that. All the key topics in the book, you can review them here. Scrolling past those, there's flashcards here. And then you get this section that says memory tables and nobody reads to the end of the heading, but it ends with practice exercises. And that's where those interactive subnetting exercises are for part four. So if I hit the plus key and I scroll down, it says eventually interactive version of Appendix D, interactive version of Appendix E. Those are the things I would click to bring up the interactive version of those appendices where it asks you a question, you type an answer, and it tells you whether you got it right, okay? So that's one option for your subnetting practice. By the way, it's the same questions in the appendix and in these interactive exercises. It's just interactive here versus a PDF in the appendices. The appendices are great because they give you a detailed explanation of how to find each answer to, to reinforce what you learned in the chapter. They're just hard to find. So if I keep scrolling down and scrolling down, I'm looking for a PDF appendices, right? And if you look down at this very last sec section, it says study resources. And if you look really close, it says PDF resources, and that's where they're hidden. 
click this plus, and now we see Appendix D, Appendix E, Appendix F, and so on. And you can click any of these, and it opens up a tab with a PDF, like you see there. And I'm just going to do a quick scroll down. Here's problems 1 through 25 that list an address and mask. And then if we scroll down, it goes through this process of how to find the answer in binary for a few of them, and then it moves on to only use the decimal process in this dark black rectangle around one octet brings focus to the um, difficult octet where you have to use the magic number mask to find the answers. If you'd like a much deeper look at subnetting with additional help, let me tell you about some products that can help with that. First off, I teach a regular three or four times a year subnetting course. It's live. It's on the O'Reilly platform. You can attend that course and I'll be there and answer your questions during the course. Also on that subscription service from O'Reilly, you can get a product I made that's a recorded version of that course that because it's recorded, I could fill in all the different topics and make it a little larger so it's a broader course with more topics. And I also made a practice question kit for subnetting. That is, it's over 900, <laughs> yeah, over 900 subnetting practice questions. And the explanations then show how to follow the process I teach in the books and in these videos here at YouTube about how to get the answer. So if you get stuck, it'll take you through the same processes you've already learned and you'll say, oh, okay, I get what I'm doing wrong and learn. So all of those are available, available through this O'Reilly Learning Service. The middle and the one on the right, you can buy directly from the publisher and they're on a permanent large discount just to help out. If you're on the other end of that spectrum and you say, hey, I don't have that subscription, I don't want to spend money on it or on products, I just want a little extra help, let me point you at my blog and, of course, videos here in my YouTube channel. On the blog, if you go to the top menu, QA, and you'll see a pull down and there's chapter 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 listed there with some options, click one of those and you'll see whatever I've got there at the blog with some practice blog posts with questions in them. And over here in this table, it lists things with the chapters and the kinds of activities I've got inside those blog posts. Then here on the YouTube channel, I have, of course have some videos related and linked up with those chapters, like the IP address rule breakers for chapter 11 and converting mass in chapter 13 and so on. So you get a little bit of help. It's not as much volume as you'd get from the paid products, but it's still a help and hey, they're free. Finally, you can do an internet search and find lots and lots of subnetting calculators, and they're great for a lot of reasons. I'll leave you to your own searching to find which ones you like best. Now, when are they useful? They're great for checking your answers when you do different kinds of subnetting math. They're very convenient. Oftentimes, it's just a web page. They're great for later stages where you just want more repetition and you've got the process down. You just want to get better and faster at it. There's a danger, though. It's tempting once you learn of multiple different ways to arrive at the same answer to think, well, I'm going to practice a second way or maybe even a third way. And you can get the processes confused and the processes are not the point. The point is to get good at one way to find each kind of answer for subnetting and then internalize it to the point where it's second nature. So you don't really have to think about the process anymore. You're just your brain's just kind of doing it when you see a new problem. All right. So it's better to use one approach. I personally don't care if you use my approach or somebody else's. All right, but whatever it is, that's just my bit of advice. Take one approach to finding the subnet ID, one approach to converting masks, and so on, and practice that. Use subnet calculators for volumes of practice late in the process. For CCNA, you have to master subnetting. These tools can help you. Feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think about the tools and which ones are working well for you. And of course, if you're new, please subscribe and get notified about all the new videos that are coming. Thanks for hanging out.